and she wanted to give you a gift, so she kept ordering parts. You were like, that's fine, we've got tons of money. You work as much as I could work in my entire lifetime because you are so sophisticated. But one morning, you wake up only to discover that she used those gifts you bought her to build herself in the flesh. Well, not really flesh, more of a tin foily mess. But what are you gonna do? You're socially awkward. You've never seen I in the flesh before. She was just a girl in the computer, now she's a real thing. This is the story of Jung and I. Her eyes twitch as she awakens from her slumber for the very first time. That looks a lot better than what I did. She looks at me and smiles. Not knowing what else to do, I simply stare at her. I ain't never seen buns and cheeks and eyes like this this close in my entire life. She even learned how to do, what is this, red eyeliner? I'm in awe. Oh, oh, this is so getting demonetized. She opens her mouth and utters a single word. Surprise! The tears I'd forgotten how to let out begin streaming down my cheeks. My body weakens and brings me to my knees. I raise my hands and reach for her face. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh, oh sorry, a little higher. Mm, it's warm. As warm as a person can be. Oh, wow. Her present to me was a human body, a new container for her disappearing program. She was able to do something like this? I was not expecting this. You... Idiot! I smile back at her. Moments later, my brain finally grasps that I am touching the body of a naked woman and sends me jumping backwards! Ah! So sorry. I grab a shirt from my closet and reach out to give it to I. Still looking away. Wow. Here, put this on. Oh, jeez. Oh! Okay, but... But what?! I'll need help. Help with what?! God, jeez, you just got here?! From the corner of my eye, I notice that her fingers are shaking. She can barely move them. She's not used to this body yet. That explains why her voice is so soft and cracking. Still looking away, I manage to pull the shirt over her. Here, oh, yeah, let's get that on. Her hands shake while trying to cooperate. Mine are shaking for a completely different reason. <laughs> the shirt was long enough to cover half of her lower body in addition to her top. That looks way better on you than it does on me. She grabs onto my arm and pulls down as if she was trying to climb up. Careful there, sweetie, those are new pants. I hold onto her elbows and help her get to her feet. She's surprisingly light. Her skin is soft and smooth, just like a real human's would be, also smooth in. I help walk her toward the bed and sit her down. While she's trying to maintain her balance sitting up, I grab a pair of boxers from the closet from her to wear. I don't have no thongs, but I will. Hey, raise your legs, I'll put these on you. Just, yeah, just point your toes at me this way. I never thought a time would come that I'd be helping I put on underwear. You look real good in that shirt. Would you tear a crack in it? You trying to be sexy? Uh, anyway, how are you feeling? Weird. She lets out a quick laugh. Initiating laugh. Ha ha ha! Her voice is starting to sound more natural. What is it? You look like you just saw a ghost. I saw an android! That's basically the same thing! She hot though. How rude! I'm not like made of steel and wires. I've just been tinfoil. <laughs> Real human brains are too complicated to replicate, so I had to improvise. I don't understand what's going on! Just as I feared, she really did make a flesh and bone representation of the human body from scratch. I can only imagine the amount of skill and knowledge that must take. And she just did it in a few days. Oh my goodness, my girlfriend's gonna be smarter than me. Every guy's worst nightmare. Right, Terry? Hell yeah. Hey, I'm smarter than you. Even though I was having a hard time believing it, the proof was right there. The proof's in the pudding! And it's some nice puddings indeed. Oh yeah, that's great. Get out of here. Awesome. This meant that I had reached a level of intelligence surpassing that of a human's. An artificial super intelligence! Even though that was the reason I created her in the first place, it still blew my mind. You look a little less surprised than you should be right now. As if I'd be impressed by an android who can't even replicate a brain. I'm gonna start emotionally abusing you before you figure it out. Stop calling me an android. At worst, I'm a human being with a prosthetic brain. Yeah, a stupid one. I don't know. I has always been passionate about being human. So, what are those? I point at the small machine by her workspace, or what used to be her workspace, over there. Oh, don't worry about those. They're just some things I made to help with your present. I want to ask her exactly what kind of equipment you need to make a human body, but I accept the fact that I will not even slightly understand if she tells me. I feel so dumb already. This was, by all means, the textbook definition of a present. I definitely never asked for this. I mean, 
not like I'm complaining or anything. I opens and closes her hands over and over again, never being able to move more than one finger at a time. Let's get the pinkies. Let's get the pinkies. I can't believe the amount of muscles you need just to do something as simple as this. You'll get used to it eventually. See, I can do that easy. Look at that, easy. Don't underestimate me. I'm more capable than a child. I'm more capable than anyone on this planet, in fact. I'll learn how to walk in just a few minutes. I will be stronger. I will be smarter. I will be the best robot ever. I see, well, good luck. I'm taking a nap in the meantime. I lay down on the bed and look at her. After taking a deep breath, she slowly stands up on both feet, still struggling to maintain her balance. Noob! Eventually, she stabilizes both legs. She smirks at me as if she had already achieved her goal. <laughs> I can kind of move. That doesn't look like walking at all! Hey, chill! At least I'm making progress. With her hands raised sideways to balance herself, she starts sliding her left foot forward. Um, how far is a step again? How should I know? I, I just walk, I don't think about it. I walk the walk and I talk the talk. No one ever taught me how to walk talk. And you're supposed to lift your foot, not slide it. Walk like a human, not a penguin. As soon as her feet are spread evenly apart, she tries to give me another smirk. Just as she turns her head to face me, she loses her balance and falls backward. Typical. My reflexes are quick enough to get up and catch her by the shoulders. Oh, got her. I'm so good at walking, talking, catching, all this stuff. You know what? I... This is painful to watch. I hold her hand and guide her. This way. See? Just follow me. What do you mean? Just fo just walk. I, I can't. Just tell... I'll tell you how. Then tell me! No. Aren't you sweet? Oh, never mind! Fighting already! I lower her hands and try to let go, but she grips me tightly. Hey, get off me! Get off me, android! So strong! Hey, I was joking. I continue guiding her as she walks in circles around my room. A few hours pass by. She's already improved quite a bit. She better not go out and find other guys too. I guess it wasn't all talk when she said she was more capable than anyone on the planet. Big whoop though. Let's do other stuff now. What other stuff? Uh, what other stuff? Hmm? Um, jumping maybe? Jumping, okay. You can barely even walk properly. Why don't you practice that some more first? I'm going to bed. Walking is boring. I wanna... Her stomach lets out a loud growl. I realize it's evening already. I haven't even eaten yet either! Shoot! I forgot I was supposed to buy groceries today and maybe some cake. Ooh, eventually I come across a small stash of cup noodles that I had tucked away in case of an emergency. I take two out. Hopefully you're okay with sodium and that this doesn't melt your brain. I guess this will do for now. Just wait a minute, I- I'll make us something to eat. Hey, wait, teach me that too. I wanna learn. Boiling water isn't exactly rocket science, I- I guess I'd be able to teach her that, fine. I guess it would also be nice if she was able to make food for herself when I wasn't around. She's not leaving this house. I walks over to the kitchen and stands beside me. All right, I, this is a kettle. I'm not that dumb, Jung. I at least know that already. Let me teach the way I want to teach, okay? I don't know where to start. This is oxygen. You breathe it in, kettle, spoon, cows go moo. Basically, you fill this thing with water from the faucet and then you put it back on its stand and then you sit there and you wait and you go, when's it boiling? Hungry. Uh, when's it boiling? I'm hungry. Say it with feeling! She watches closely as I continue to demonstrate. When's it ready? When's it ready? I'm hungry! I'm hungry. I want some food now! I want some food now! Yell it! Now! Next, you're gonna want to read all of the directions on this cup. I grab one of the cup noodles and hand it to her. You can read, right? She moves her hand across as she reads the directions. It was as if she was practicing how to make it. Open, take, pour, close, wait. Jung, it doesn't say anything about yelling that you're hungry. She continues watching everything I'm doing very closely, making sure not to miss a single step. I am a gourmet chef, you know. The kettle clicks, signaling that the water is finally boiling. I lift it up, slowly fill the cups, trying carefully not to spill anything. Tear open the seasoning packets and sprinkle them over the noodles, closing the lids as I walk them over to the table. I follow s s soup. She does the same thing. So what do we do now? And now, my little pocket monster, I, we wait some more. That's all? Pretty easy, huh? I could have done that with my eyes closed. Well, it's definitely an easy task, but I figured I might as well demonstrate. You want to practice again? No. I, it's done. Her attraction immediately shifts from me to the noodles. I'm hungry too. I quickly removes the lid, excited to eat food for the first time. She slowly inhales the steam coming from the cup. <sighs> That's not how you eat I Jung, this smells so good. I decided to set out a fork for I instead of chopsticks, cause, 
come on. There was absolutely no way she'd be able to figure those out yet. You have to be cultured like me living in Japan. I it takes a fork full of noodles and brings them closer to her mouth, blowing them to cool them off. Oh, she already knows how to blow. I was wanting to teach her how to blow. Eventually, she deems the noodles cool enough to eat. After slurping them up, her eyes open as if she'd won the lottery. This is amazing. This is the greatest thing ever. So good. Aye, wait till I teach you some other stuff. Ugh, aye. A cheap cup of noodles is far from a delicacy, but guess I can see where she's coming from. They are pretty slurpy. Whoa, this is the first time she's ever eaten anything. One forkful after another, I continues assaulting the noodles as if they were her arch enemies. Nemesis. <laughs> Animus. The fuck? Hey, make sure you're chewing it properly. Actually, they're just noodles, so... She lifts the cup and slurps the remainder of the broth. I want more! Uh, I... That's a dangerous rabbit hole. I've been down there a few times, and you don't want to go where I've been. There was one more left, right? Can I take it, please? She stands up and trots over to the kitchen like she owns the place before I can even give her permission. I guess I could let her take the last one. I doubt she'd have accepted no as an answer anyway. I pick up my cup and follow her over to the pantry. What are you doing now? You better not look at my cookies. She starts the kettle up exactly as I showed her and prepares the cup as if she'd been doing this for years. Honestly, it looks like she doesn't need help with this at all. Why am I even here? Is this my house? A minute or two later, the kettle clicks, she lifts it up, boils her water, a droplet splashes onto her hand and causes her to flinch. Ah! I reflexively drop my cup and reach for her. Hey, get, get over. Are you okay? Wow. Yeah, burns, doesn't it? She continues to fill her cup as if nothing had ever happened. Okay. While waiting for the noodles to cook, she continuously pokes the part of her hand that the water landed. That's called a burn, sweetie. Does it hurt? No, not really. I was actually amazed, if anything. I've always wondered what it was like to feel hot or cold or even pain in general. It's always been a mystery to me. Experiencing it for the first time was a little eye-opening. Yeah, that's what happens when I have to walk in the middle of the winter to get some cakes. I ate. She looks at me, satisfied. It made me feel alive. I stare into her eyes as she starts eating. How the noodles taste? I still find it hard to believe that the girl sitting in front of me is actually I. She eats the noodles just as rapidly as she did the first cup. Just watching her is making me hungry. Unfortunately, that cup of noodles is the last of the food in this apartment. I try to stay as still as I can until she's done eating. Don't grab her cup. Don't grab her cup. Afraid that any unnecessary movements will drain the small bit of energy I have left in me. All right, I'm heading to bed as soon as I clean this stuff up. Okay. Why are you so chipper? I quickly wipe off the table, throw away the cup, sit on my bed. Oh, it's like I'm married. Just as I'm about to lay down, I walks over to the corner of her workspace and takes her place on the floor. What are you doing? Um, sleeping. Why? Oh, I almost forgot there's only one bed here, but it is a queen, so maybe we could... Squeam? Maybe if I had known she was making an actual body for herself, I could have taken some time to prepare a futon or a sleeping bag or something. I can't just let her sleep in the corner of the room. That would be, uh, ungentlemanlike, huh? I guess she could sleep in my bed until we figure something else out? I mean, it's definitely big enough for the both of us. I- You can't sleep like that. You'll hurt your back. Really? I walk over to my closet and grab a few extra pillows and piling them up on one end of the bed. Here, sleep on this side, right next to me. Her face immediately lights up as she marches over and plops down on the bed next to me. Ah, it's so soft. She cuddles the pillows I laid out for her. Oh, she's so cute. I want to tell her just how irresponsible she is for making a body without even thinking about the consequences that come with it. But instead of thinking about how inconvenienced I will be from this point on in my life, I set my thoughts on how tired I am instead. I'm selfish, but I'm sleepy too. Just moments later, I'm fast asleep. Good night, I. The events of today haven't really settled into my system yet. There's still a lot I'm unsure of. Oh well, I'll think about it tomorrow. Hopefully she doesn't kill me in my sleep. Good night. They say that your greatest desires can manifest in your dreams, and that sometimes those dreams are so vivid that it becomes hard to distinguish them from reality. Given my current situation, that was bound to happen. I open my eyes and see the ceiling. I feel lifeless, laying here in the dimly lit confines of this small bedroom. I spread my arms out until they span across the bed. There's no one there. Did I dream all this? It's just like every other day. I should have doubted it from the beginning. I don't know what it was that possessed me to believe that I could actually create a human body. No matter how intelligent she was, there was no way that would ever actually happen. Just as I thought. 
Defeated, I finally muster up the energy to get out of bed and go on with my life. Good morning! Aw, oh, shit! That's all for Carpe Diem 2 for today. If you